Hello, I'm Michael Tam, a GP at the General Practice Unit in Fairfield Hospital and a conjoint academic at the School of Public Health and Community Medicine, UNSW. It is my pleasure to present the results of a research project funded by the RSCGP Foundation that we conducted this year. My co-investigators are Louis Leong, my ILP student, Professor Nicholas Soir and Dr Charlotte Hespie. This study examined the beliefs and attitudes of patients towards the acceptability of receiving questions about their drinking from GPs. In brief, alcohol is a major contributor to the burden of disease and injury in Australia. It is second only to tobacco in terms of the burden from substances and is perceived as the drug of greatest concern by the Australian community, according to the National Drug Strategy Household Survey. In the general practice setting, about one in four adult patients are risky drinkers. GPs are in the ideal setting for early detection and offering brief alcohol interventions. They have access to the at-risk population and often see individuals before the onset of harm. Screening instruments and brief interventions are well validated and appear to be effective in primary care. However, effectively no GP uses these tools in routine practice. In a previous qualitative study of Australian GP beliefs and attitudes, we identified three interacting factors that acted as barriers to early detection. The first that came through strongly was the stigma of being a problem drinker. Even though the behaviours of risky drinking were common, being identified or labelled as someone with a drinking problem was especially socially unacceptable. This led to GPs perceiving that the histories they received from patients was that they were often inaccurate. However, probing into a patient's alcohol use behaviours was seen as something that could threaten the patient-doctor relationship. One very important aspect that was missing was the patient perspectives. Relatively little is known about patient beliefs and attitudes towards alcohol discussions with the GPs in the literature. Our position. If we want successful implementation of early risky drinking detection practices, we need these practices to be informed by patient beliefs and attitudes. This project had three research questions. One, does asking about drinking within a SNAP framework, which is recommended by the RECGP, have an effect on the acceptability of alcohol inquiry? Two, there are suggestions from the literature that relevant reasons of presentation are important. Which ones and how? Three, what are patient beliefs and attitudes surrounding these consultation contexts? If there are effects, what are the potential explanations for these phenomena? The first two research questions were answered using quantitative methods with a survey experiment. All patients aged 18 years and older presented to a community general practice clinic in Glebe over a week in May 2014 were randomised to receive one of two postal questionnaires. We had about a one in three response rate. The questionnaires asked the participants to rate the acceptability to receiving alcohol questions from a GP in 20 vignettes. These were based on the most frequent patient reasons for encounter and problems managed in Australian general practice, according to the ongoing BEACH study. The vignettes were written to a fifth grade reading level and in the third person to reduce socially desirable answers. On the top is scenario one in the control questionnaire where participants are asked to rate the acceptability of receiving alcohol questions alone as compared to the control questionnaire below, where alcohol is asked within SNAP. The participant responses were categorised as unacceptable, ambivalent or acceptable. The primary outcome measure was the number of vignettes out of 20 rated as acceptable. The final research question, looking at patient beliefs and attitudes, was answered using qualitative methods. Of the 144 survey respondents, half indicated that they were willing to be contacted for an interview. Making use of the demographic information, 23 participants were, select, were purposefully selected to maximise variation. Semi-structured individual interviews were conducted, recorded and transcribed. Going back to the three aims, for the first, the primary outcome measure was the number of acceptable vignettes rated out of a maximum of 20 and we compared the differences in means between the control and intervention groups. For the second, we described the variation by tabulating the mean number of acceptable ratings by vignette. For the third, we constructed an explanatory model using grounded theory method. The results. The mean age of the survey respondents was 53.8 years and around two-thirds were women. 
66% were married or had a regular partner, and the participants were generally well educated. The majority were university educated. About one in five were non-drinkers, and over a third were risky drinkers. This diagram demonstrates two demographic clusters. Starting at the middle, university educated participants were more likely to be risky drinkers and either employed or retired. Participants whose highest level of education was high school were more likely to be non-drinkers and on a pension. The primary outcome. The intervention group rated an average 2.1 additional vignettes as acceptable, asking about alcohol within SNAP does improve acceptability. This was only a small to moderate effect though. There were major variations to acceptability depending on the reason for presentation. For instance, almost everyone found alcohol questions acceptable in the diabetes, depression, anxiety and hypertension vignettes. However, only around half did in the back pain vignette. In our qualitative analyses of the interviews, we constructed a three-factor model that seemed to explain the data. The perceived relevance of the alcohol dialogue seemed to have a major impact on its acceptability. Most patients seemed to have a positive attitude towards preventive care and health promotion as general concepts. However, within specific consultations, unless the inquiry was conceptually linked to an agenda in the patient's mind, it might not be acceptable. This might explain the large variations in acceptability depending on the reasons for presenting, and might also explain the improved acceptability of asking within SNAP. An implicit health promotion frame is in place. <clears throat> the manner in which the dialogue is constructed seemed to affect its acceptability. For instance, collaborative and negotiated approaches were seen as more acceptable, whereas if the GP was seen as pushy, this was seen as less acceptable. Lastly, the asking of alcohol was sometimes seen by patients as a challenge to their moral identity. If they perceived that they were being judged or might be judged, they might be evasive and the inquiry perceived as less acceptable. This factor seems well aligned with concerns raised by GPs in previous research. To summarise the answers to our three questions, 1. Asking alcohol within SNAP does improve the acceptability of the inquiry. 2. There are major variations to acceptability depending on the most common reasons for presentation, so acceptability probably shouldn't be assumed. 3. Patients have complex beliefs and attitudes. The acceptability of alcohol inquiry seemed to be affected by three immediate consultation factors. The perceived relevance of the dialogue, how the dialogue was constructed, and the perceived challenges to moral identity. An important limitation of our study is that almost 90% of the participants were born in Australia, the UK, New Zealand, or North America. Our study, like most others in the literature, was of people living in what is described as a temperance or ambivalent drinking culture. The perspectives of people from other drinking cultures are mostly unknown. The next step in our project will involve surveying the views of the culturally diverse people uh, visiting, visiting GPs in southwestern Sydney. Thank you.